Hey everyone, it's Bigzy and welcome back to Aviary Attorney. Okay, so we're about to read uh, Monster Kingly's testimony here. And it says, I was sitting upon the Pont des Art at 9 a.m. I saw the king and his entourage enter the building. Then around 9.30 a.m. I saw this shifty looking fox lurking around the entrance. I saw him take out a rose and carefully rub the stem like he was applying some sort of powder. Uh, to be honest, this is a bit harder than the last one. Actually, it's a lot harder than the last one. Because in the last one, I feel like we had enough evidence, we had everything together, we had- we could have done multiple lines of different situations and theories and stuff, but with this one, I feel like we barely have a theory. Um, so I either want to question... God, I don't know, man. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I either want to question Powder or Pont de Art. Uh, yeah, we'll do Powder. Monsieur Kingly, you say that you saw a fox rubbing the stem of a rose. <laughs> yep, saw it with my own eyes. Uh, are you sure you saw Powder? How far away were you from the south entrance? 20 meters, perhaps? 30? I'm somewhat doubtful that you can make out powder being applied to anything at those sort of distances. Monster, I don't claim to have seen the powder itself. I said that it looked like he was applying powder to the flower stem. It could have been wax or liquid or whatever, but the guy was definitely putting something on the flower. I see. Well, that's nice and vague. Do I have another question about the poisoned rose? Uh, sure. I mean, I feel like he's just gonna be like, yes, I'm sure it was a rose. God, like, you think I can't tell the difference between flowers? But we'll ask anyways, just to be safe. Are you certain that the fox was handling a rose and not some other type of flower? Pretty sure. The red petals stand out quite nicely on the gray January morning. Gah, 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 gah. I can't talk. So you are confident. You are absolutely sure that you clearly saw a bright red flower in the fox's hands. What are you getting at, JJ? I mean, we don't have proof that he possessed a rose. Oh wait, no we do. The swan said that she gave him a rose. Uh, let's roll with it, I guess. I don't know. I don't want to say nothing. I have reason to believe that Prince Juan did not possess a rose at the time. I think he may have been in possession of a sprig of monk should. Or even just a simple daisy. Really, you're claiming that Prince Juan did not possess a rose despite 22 witnesses testifying to seeing him hand a rose to the king? This is a ludicrous line of inquiry. There is zero doubt that Prince Juan possessed a ro rose on the day of the murder. Agreed. Defense, knock it off with this moronic way of thinking. Hey, you're moronic. No, I'm not stalling. I'm not a buffoon. I'm just forgetful. Dang it. <sighs> no. Never mind. I have no more questions about the poisoned rose. Aww. Uh, shifty looking fox, you say? Question mark? Maybe? Monsieur Kingly, you claim that you saw a shifty looking fox. Yep. Super mega shifty. Uh. Oh, no, not that one. That's specious. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to ask that one either, because he's probably just going to be like, I'm sure. He looks super Spanish or something stupid like that. Uh. Never mind. Ponte Art? Monsieur Kingly, you said that you were sitting upon the railings of the Ponte Art the morning of the incident. Yep. Ooh, I just remembered! Monsieur Kingly, you have a good view of the Louvre south, en south entrance, didn't you? God, I can't read today. Yep, the Ponte Art is a great vantage point for seeing the Grand Gallery south side. What about the other entrances? The other entrances, you mean like if you were entering from the Tolaris Gardens or the Place du Carousel? Specifically the Tolaris Gardens? No, I couldn't possibly see those areas from the bridge. 
But of course that isn't relevant. Monsieur Kingley witnessed Prince Juan entering the, from the south entrance with the flower in hand. That's what counts. Bull honky! What if Prince Juan didn't enter from the south entrance? What if he approached the Louvre from... Tulare's Gardens to the west? Tulare's Gardens to the west. Wow, there's an echo in here. <laughs> That's a big what if. Do you have any evidence Prince Juan entered the Louvre from the Tulare's Gardens? As a matter of fact, I do. I have definitive proof that Prince Juan approached from the west, not the south. Hey, I know what I saw, Monsieur. I'm doubtful too, but go on, JJ. Show us this definitive proof that shows Prince Juan entered the Louvre from the Tulare's Gardens. If you insist, bird brain. Where is it? There it is. Look at this. A book page? Page 44 of Don Quixote, specifically. It was found just outside the Louvre's west entrance. This proves nothing. I'm not done yet. Take a look at this. Don Quixote. This is the book Prince Juan has been reading in jail since his arrest. I believe he has had it on his person for quite some time. And yes, page 44 is missing. That was the first thing I checked when I ripped it out of the book. Just kidding. Do you realize what this means, Severin? The defendant was present in the Tulare's gardens prior to entering the Louvre. This also means that in all likelihood... <laughs> The defendant entered the Louvre from the west entrance, not the south. He could not have possibly been seen by Monsieur Kingley from the Pont des Art. <laughs> what? I know what I saw, Monsieur. A fine theory, Falcon, but maybe the defendant took the long way around. One can still travel from the Tulares to the Louvre south entrance by walking along the river. An extra two kilometers of walking just to enjoy the pre-murder scenery. Let's not say silly things, Kokoriko. Okay, maybe the defendant deliberately left the page there to mislead the investigation. Now you're the one who's blindly speculating. It's not blind speculation, it's a viable hypothesis. You're fond of logic, aren't you, Kokoriko? Let's talk about Occam's razor. When torn between two seemingly equal hypotheses, we must side with the one that imposes the fewest assumptions. Which of these theories takes fewer assumptions? 1. The page from Prince Juan's book fell out on its way to the Louvre's... I think that's supposed to be West Entrance. 2. Prince Juan deliberately planted a page on the off chance that we it would be discovered and then took the long way around. How dare you, the nerve of you, to lecture me on such basic philosophical concepts. I'll stop lecturing you when you stop making such basic mistakes. Dang, get ready for some rotisserie chicken tonight, guys, because that bird just got burned. Monster Falcon, please calm yourself. What is the point of all this yammering? The ultimate point is that Tucson's testimony is fabricated, made up, utter fiction. No, everything I've said is the truth. I suspect that the witness isn't even a fisherman. I'm not a fisherman. See, he admits it himself. <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> I feel your pain, Toussaint. But I gained a little favor with the jury, so not, not as bad. Prosecutor, you have something that will put this arrogant falcon in his place, don't you? I must concede. You concede. On this point, at least, Falcon's evidence strongly suggests that the key component of Monsieur Kingley's testimony is false. Ah, no. This doesn't mean that Prince Juan is innocent, of course. All Falcon has demonstrated is that this particular witness is unreliable. But I did see something. I really did. Alright, so maybe I didn't exactly see a shifty-looking fox. I made that part of the story up but I did see a swan lurking around the south entrance on the morning of the murder. Don't say that. No, I like her. Don't get her involved. A swan. Do shut up, witness. Your word is mud at this point. How can we possibly trust anything you have to say? Uh, your honor, Judge Romulus, we're out of time. We're ten minutes overdue to start the hare versus tortoise trial. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh, I wonder if the hare is suing the tortoise or the tortoise is suing the hare. I don't know, it doesn't matter. 
Is it that late already? Claire says I was hoping we could have the case wrapped up in a single trial session. It is a shame, but ultimately we inaccurate said sentencing is preferable to a speedy sentencing. Yes, all right, I don't need to hear your moralizing. Court will resume this Friday, the 21st of January at 9 o'clock. Don't be late. Prosecutor, do your damn job and get this stupid fox a conviction already. I will do my best to ensure that justice is served, your honor. Oh, thank goodness. A lot came up in that trial, huh? Yes, no doubt about that. But something's bothering me. Why would that fisherman guy, Monster Kingly, lie on the witness stand? Uh, maybe he was coerced? I mean, he looks like someone that would like the attention, but... Well, it's possible he was coerced or bribed. That's what I was thinking. Maybe the real murderer threatened the fisherman to make up a story about Prince Juan. Let's keep an open mind. Anything is possible at this stage. But to be perfectly honest, something else is bothering me about the trial. I mean, it really upset me to hear that Mademoiselle Signy was there, but Judge Romulus was acting super weird. I feel like he's involved somehow. So I'd rather point that out than Mademoiselle Signy. Judge Romulus, he's acting without a shre- Yeah, sure, that's why. He's obviously more interested in securing a guilty verdict than he is in discovering the truth. But why? Might be he has some vendetta against the Spanish royalty. I'm not sure. There must be something else at work here. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me, Monsieur Falcon. Now oh, you. Sorry to bother you, but this uh, letter just arrived. I think it's for you. A letter from me? I wonder why it wasn't sent to my office. Have you been demoted to courier status, Rupert? Oh, hush, hush, Sparrison. I don't need to be, uh, pitied by a first-year dropout. Oh, good comeback. So what does the letter say, Falcon? It's... it's a threat. A threat made with cut-out newspaper letters. Whoa, I didn't know those things actually existed. Let me see. Falcon. Stop your investigation or there he will be consequences. I can't do that, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Okay. Scary. There is no question that the letter originated from Major Howe's murderer. He or she must be aware that we are getting close to uncovering the truth. Sounds about right, but why would a person write with cut out newspaper letters like this? Masking one's handwriting would be the most common reason. Although I can't help but wonder why they would bother since we don't have any handwriting samples to compare it to. We're still going ahead with our investigation though, right? Oh, I want to say no so badly just to see what happens, but it's probably just going to say yes anyway, so yes. Oh yes, absolutely. If a lawyer were deterred every time they received a threatening letter, they, we would never get any work done. Besides, there are only three days before the next trial session and we can't afford to be worrying about petty things like this. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Wow, you're right. Let's make those days count. And so we will, but in the next episode, because I need to end this episode here. I don't want to run over. And... Yeah, I think what we're going to do for the next episode is probably head to the Chocolate Emporium. Because I didn't ask him about Mademoiselle Signy, because I was so sure that she wasn't involved. But now, uh, that's not quite as clear. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this episode here. And in the next episode, we'll visit the Chocolate Emporium. So I want to thank you guys for watching. And I will see you in our next little adventure. Bye!